you'll have to deal with it. And you have to figure out a nice way of dealing with it, at least until such time as you then punch them in the face. Right? The first and most obvious one is the one that everybody knows about, everybody's heard of, and is a strict classification on any number of websites. The rules lawyer. The person that has nine books to your three. The person that has deliberately read every source book just in case you might be running an adventure in one of them so that they know that the next <coughs> time you go into the chapel, turn the third candlestick on the right. Right? The rules lawyer. There is one way of dealing with the rules lawyer, and it's not very nice, but it's easy. It basically, you get it out of the way as quick as possible. Anyone want to make a rough guess? Top left. Top left, everybody, in unison. My games, my rules. Spot on. And if they know an adventure, sorry, we're running that adventure. You found out or you've already read it. If you already knew it from long ago, sorry, we're running that one today. Right? We'll get onto one you might not know tomorrow. Right? But in terms of arguing the rules in the book, you're the GM. If they are coming at you with, I should be rolling 4d8, and you're telling me to roll 2d6, why is that? Because it says, in this expansion of this bit here or there, or there. Can you find that rule for me in the next 20 seconds? No. Then you are rolling 2d6. Oh, but, tough shit. My game, my rules. Right? You need to get it said early with the rules lawyer. Right? Use their experience. If you actually happen to know that they know what the stats are for various things, then you can actually make them feel wanted for once by saying, right, he's rolling that, what should he be rolling? 48 for that sort of shotgun while surfing on a shark in the middle of the time square. Right? There, roll 48. Right? All told, you've got to remember those words. I've left them up there from the very start. My game, my rules. Thanks. Any questions on the rules wire? There's one. There's one sort that's split two ways. I, I found this actually happens most often in couples. You've got the loud one and the quiet one. The loud one and that's generally me, is the one that takes over the game. Right? Straight away, it's their game. Right? They won't try, it's just it'll happen that they'll be the one talking the most, they'll be the one with the action plan. They might be the one with the right action plan, consistently, but it's the one that always has to go on and make sure that everybody's following them. Right? If there's a team and there's a nominated team captain and somebody's giving out the orders that's not them, there's an easy clue to say, they're the loud one. Right? Easiest way I've found to dealt with to deal with them is a very polite, cool, excellent, that's your turn, moving on. Which deals with, generally it's the wife. Right? I'm not kidding you. It's, if in a couple, It'll be the husband that does one, and the wife will be along, and she'll be enjoying it, but she's either not got enough confidence to jump in, or she, I'm saying she. You'll have to accept this tiny bit of sexism on my part just from what I'm saying, but it happens to blokes as well, right? They'll be the one that either can't see the way into the game, or can't actually get their point in. Right? They might not want to throw in with everything, every time, everywhere. We've got to be able to know that they're there and give them their option. Right? It's not even a case of waiting for the initiative to come up for their turn. It is a case of, that's nice, that's your stuff done, moving to you. What do you want to do? If it's nothing, are you sure? Cool, moving on. Right? Give them specifically time to play their own part. Yes? One useful tip, keep the noisy or the fourth round player 
bar and turn the quiet ones are close so you can speak to them without having to shout over. It's what I it's what I always do to touch on. Is there's a difference between the quiet player who doesn't quite get the chance to really or doesn't quite know what to do, and the quiet player who is waiting or who is just kind of sat there enjoying watching other people. Mm. Which yeah. brings me on to the next one. Because <coughs> there is the clueless. Right? Not the clueless imbecile, but the person who's brand new to this. Mm. Right? The person who has sat there for the first couple of sessions and is trying to follow the plot and is just about following what's going on but not yet got enough of a handle to see their own place in changing anything. Right? This is a, realistically, it's a new, new player. Right? It's a new player and they don't have enough experience to just be able to, ah, drive. Right? They don't. So it's actually dealt with exactly the same way. When somebody's, right, that's nice, you're all done, or I don't care if you're done or not, that's what you're doing, moving on. Your turn. Do you want to do something? Do you want to say something? Do you want to get in on this one at any point? And <coughs> because you're there. Not because Set you've got... There. Right, okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yes. That's, that's the downside. Sometimes the quiet one is quiet because otherwise they go sociopathic. There's the additional detail to that. There's the additional detail to that is they don't understand not just the system but what the fuck they're doing. Right? So you get them to describe what they want to do. So shooting somebody from horseback is fair enough to describe. Right? As I ride past, I'm going to blow his fucking head off with my shotgun. Fine. It's not for them until they've got at least a little bit of experience to figure out what it is that that means in terms of the system. That's your job. So if you're going to run, if you're going to do the ride down somebody while on horseback and shoot the head off with them, right, your horse riding is that much, your shooting is that much, this, 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 and to this together means that what you're rolling is 5v8. Right? So, what's that? These ones. Right. A couple of pyramids stuck together. Just roll that, and then we we'll sort out the numbers. Right? You tell me what it is you want to do, I'll tell you what it is that you're actually doing in terms of the game. Right? And not forgetting to describe the effect of that shot. Because if they see somebody's head go BOOM! It's like, I want to do that again! <laughs> Bringing us on to the top three. Number one, the sex pest. <laughs> I love the fact that there's at least a couple of people at the back that are looking at each other. <laughs> yes, John. Definitively not me. It's not me either. John. It is you. The sex pest, the person that discovers that anything in a roleplay game is just hilarious and can be used for innuendo or sexually molesting other than NPCs. Preferably the NPCs rather than other player characters. No. Right. Best way of dealing with that one is trying to get them to do it to, an, to a player character that can stand up to them and chop their fucking head off. Whichever one they choose. There are times when it's a bit of a giggle. In Starship Thingy, there are some medical tools in the medical bay. One of which is long, smooth, and rounded at the end. It is a surgical tool for use in the game. Hello. Hello. Hi. Did I have a seat? Oh, thanks. I'm quite hard this, though. Okay. If you decide to ask me to repeat anything, there's quite a lot to cover. <laughs> Right. The next words out of my mouth are the sex pest. <laughs> right. Um, yes, it is a hilarious tool that is used as a surgical procedure, but it also looks amazingly like a dildo. It even vibrates. It is in the game for that hilarious purpose of hey, I've got a dildo. What does it do? I'll tell you now. What it does is it's the um, anaesthetic. 
right? If you touch nerve endings with it, it deadens everything in that area. So if you touch it to someone's head, it knocks them out. <laughs> Just a little. Right? But you've got people wandering around going. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious to a point. If you have that sort of gaming group that finds that sort of thing funny, keep it going. Fuck it. If we're all having a laugh, what does it matter? When somebody is starting to feel uncomfortable around the table, you should be able to spot this. And when everybody is seeing that being a bit uncomfortable around the table about this, Stop it straight away. I'm looking at you, John, but not specifically aimed at you. It's just you did that's, one that's... time. <laughs> it's not usually me. It's not usually you, no, it just was. <laughs> okay. right. The sex pest, if, it's, if everybody's enjoying it, let them go. Right. But it does come to a very fucking screeching halt at some point when somebody is going to leave the room crying, and I'm not kidding you on that one. Shut it down early if it's wrong. You with me? You always you. Come on. Just the glory of the sex best can also have character off the back line. Yes, <laughs> yes, but he's not a part of the society anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You were so guilty of the toxic drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't denying this one. Yeah, I'll take that bullet for you, one dude. <laughs> uh, no, I was actually splitting my attention between both of you. <laughs> Even though you weren't the toxic drunk during my game. <laughs> Sorry, uh, one time. One time. One time no. You did. It was the first time I met you. <laughs> Didn't know. We just turned up to say hello. <laughs> I get it. But it was the first time I met you, you came into one of my games that was a fun game and you started as the toxic drunk. I kept you on it. Right. I will never tell people that you cannot have a drink before playing my game. Never. I will throw you the fuck out if you're a pisshead during my game. Right? I have no problems with people having a drink. I have problems with people being drunk and this is why I will shut the fuck down straight away. Right? It starts with a quiet word to the side, then you move on to a quiet word away from the table, and then it's a, you get the fuck away from my table because I ain't playing with you anymore. Right? Come back sober, we'll, have, we'll try again. But I'm shutting you down if you come to my games drunk. Simple as that. I got it from when I, was, when I used to work in the theatre or film or telly. You just go. Right? Full stop. And the one that fucks me off the most, and I swear to God, if any of you ever come to one of my games and do this, I will behead you. <laughs> I am not fucking kidding. The one that fucks me off beyond all belief, and stop tapping, is the distraction. The person that is there in body, but their brains elsewhere. Right? I don't mind it if you don't know what's going on. Right? If you're trying to follow it and you right? I don't even mind it if you don't know what's going on and you're not confident enough to actually ask what's going on. Right? I'm, I'm a pain in the ass in my games when I'm actually a player. It's like, hang on, what the fuck just happened there? <laughs> just, just explain to me why we are now looking for a peg-legged Irishman. <laughs> I thought we were having a drink and investigating the will. And now, what the fuck just happened there? Right? I'll stop the game. So in character, I'll stop the game. It's like, whoa, what? What are you, why are you doing that? Right? But I'm talking the distracted. And what I'm referring to specifically is, put your phone away. I don't care if it's on or not. Right? You, if you take a phone call, you take a phone call. It's a hobby, fuck it. Right? But, I don't want you sitting there texting, browsing the internet. I don't want you on your laptop. I don't want you reading a fucking book. Right? In fact, no, it's, it's the laptop and the tablet and so on. Oh, right? I... <laughs> <laughs> you need anything shut? You, remember the, you won't remember the bank raid? 
sorry, the whole point of being in town was to rob the bank. Right? That ended up with the sheriff's office and so on. Mm. The player to my left. I am running a high stakes fucking action orientated Deadlands game for nine people that is fucking rip roll roller coaster. It started with somebody shooting a horse and a fucking train. I ripped that straight out of the Dark Knight for its cinematic effect. Right? To robbing a bank and a shootout. Oh, look at this, it's a lol cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Okay. That. So we're in the van. Look at this. You're not just distracting yourself, you're also distracting me now. But put the fucking computer away. I don't care if you've got the PDFs, rule books on that fucking thing. You're obviously not looking at it. And if you've got your thesis due tomorrow, go the fuck home and do your thesis. Right? The game is a game, and it will be here next week. If you do not want to play my game, do not fucking turn up to my game. Right? I will not allow you to sit there and piss about and distract yourself and others around you with inconsequential shit when I have spent time and effort putting this game together. It's rude to me, and it's rude to everyone else around this fucking table. And that's kind of where I was getting the angst part of it. Put the laptop away. Play the game. If you don't want to play the game, leave. Right. There. I won't say I have a zero tolerance, but it's pretty fucking close. Out of character conversation kills games. You can sit in chat and not listen to what's going on. Yeah. No. It drives me up the wall. Um, and it just gets to the point where you, uh, where you sit and think to yourself, is my game boring? Is that why no one's paying attention? Because I ask you guys if you're enjoying this, and you say yes. But, uh, yes. But I, I'm sorry to end on such an angry note, but you might as well know that I am a very angry person. Mm. A lot of the time. Right. Um, but that's, that's what I have in terms of problem players. Most of the time, just a swift nudge in the direction of it's not your turn yet, it's your turn, or do you want to take a turn here? What is your character doing? What it is that you want to do? Calm down, stop drinking, and put the dildo away. Right? Straight away you come in and the next words are sex pest. I'm sorry, you're in the firing line right from the word go. Right? I apologise for that. Whoa! <laughs> if you want to point out... No, in my... By the way, is anybody here under 18? Because by law I've got to... No. That was really funny. <laughs> right. To give you the basics. Top left, four words. They are... My game, my game. rules. you got the cube of death. Everybody remember the cube of death? Yeah. yeah. Right. Everybody remember how to work the cube of death? Yeah. Right. Learn your system by setting two players in a blank cube and running in your head over and over again the combat system when you're learning a new system. Right? Which is more important, plot, freedom, or fun? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> right? Stop to take. Stop to take. Everybody knows why you need a big bag of jelly babies, don't you? Yeah. Keep your energy levels up. Right? Stop to take energy. Yes, seven levels. Right? Yeah. Everybody knows the seven levels, and the rule about the level one is. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. All right, let's get that all in unison. If you start it, it will die. Go. Right? House rule: If you see somebody with a name you recognise, they're gonna die. Right? Immersion. It was a dark and stormy night. Everybody remember that? Right? The three questions you ask yourself before starting a scene are What's the weather like? What's the time of day? What's the time of year? Clear on that? <coughs> the three act play. Act one. They just jump in. Act two. I'm ready. Act three. Climax. There's a sex pest again. And once we've created our story, we have built for ourselves. A masterpiece. 
Is there anybody 